Hey, what's up folks? Welcome back to another 3D Hangouts. My name is Noel Ruiz. I'm a designer here at Adafruit. Join me every week is my brother Pedro. Good morning, everybody. I'm Pedro's Creative Tech here at Adafruit. And every week, every week we're here to share 3D printed projects featuring electronics from Adafruit. That's right. This is we combine 3D printing and DIY electronics to make inspirational projects. Hello, everybody, hanging out in the Discord chat room. Welcome to the show. Good morning, good morning. Apologies in advance. Looks like they just set up to cut a tree right in front of our window. Yeah, we need that. Right to the side. Ah, so. we need it. Timing maybe doesn't work out, but hey, we, this needs to be done. So, so they're a little bit enjoy. late because we were reminiscing on this week's project. <laughs> yes, this is this massive project here. It's as big as the, the, the desktop here. Um, yeah, so we're going to do the normal stuff. We'll do some housekeeping. We'll uh, call out some shout outs after the housekeeping. Just to let everybody know. You have to get closer to the mic. Yeah, I have so the mic can here. Drown out. I can the... see the mic levels look fine. I can hear the All right, motors. let's do the adafruit.com slash uh, for re. That's where you can get all the information on the deals, the freebies. If you spend more dollars with Adafruit, you'll get more freebies. Check this out. Details are at adafruit.com slash free. The holidays are upon us. They're and here. there's a blog post on the Adafruit site that tells you all about the shipping deadlines. It has been updated every day. It gets updated because the time limits just keep getting. The windows are closing and the time is getting shorter and shorter. So you can see here all the latest details for delivery by Thursday, December 22. Place all your UPS three-day orders by the 16th, and there's a two-day and the next day as well listed. But it's pretty much it. We're uh, we're pretty much here. Winter is here. Woo! <laughs> Woo! Um, we got newsletters. If you want to subscribe to the products newsletter that gets products that get released every week, go to adafruit.com/newsletter. Adafruit Daily is where you can subscribe to uh, daily newsletters or weekly slash bi-weekly stuff um, like the Python and Microcontrollers newsletter. Shout out to everybody for subscribing to that. It's a good opportunity for folks in the community to share their Python related projects. Giving a shout out to the CircuitPython Show podcast hosted by Paul Cutler. Check it out every week for, I think this is the last episode of the year, so check it out. Um, on your favorite uh, podcasting services. Help Wanted, the jobs board at jobs.adafruit.com is still around. Check it out if you are in the market for a new gig or some help with some projects. You can uh, post it up there on jobs.adafruit.com. And I think that's it for the housekeeping. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out in the Discord chat room. We're uh, scrolling to find everybody's name. <laughs> Good morning, Andy Calloway, Dewester, Rosin, Liz, Blitz City, Koyoshi, hello everybody. Pedro's there too, hey Pedro. Yanni Scoo, Yanni's hanging out as well. Good morning. Yeah, there's a chat Good chain morning. Lawn, lawn mowers. Yep. All the good noises. It's about and to we have get... A hey Pooch. About to get loud. All right, let's go ahead and jump into this week's project. Apuchi. Special dog. <laughs> Who is a good boy? Me. Well. Good boy. <laughs> All right, let's jump into this week's project. It is. Dog break. We're retrofitting this sweet. Oh, what year was this in? This iBook with an iPad. We need to do some history. Uh, some research on. History. I don't know. I put the model number in the learn guide. You yeah. never had actually. I didn't have this one. I had the graphite version, but then I quickly returned it for uh, the Pismo. Okay. Which was that black. All right. Tell us about the project. Yeah. yeah. So this project was inspired by a bunch of the uh, social media builds. Sure. Uh, There's a couple iPad of them. iPad conversions. iPad conversions. They've made Raspberry Pi computers out of them, and then a really cool one where they rip out all the guts and stick an iPad inside. That's the one we did here. So uh, uh, took a little bit to find a. Um, keyboard that would fit perfectly in here. One of the things uh, that we wanted to do was not uh, destroy the shell and a lot of the builds out there are like 3D printing this entire two shells so it's basically half of the original computer mm. being thrown out so uh, didn't want to go that route so we made some 3D printed inserts 
So these inserts here uh, hold on to the iPad and the uh, keyboard. We have a trackpad on there that works really cool with the uh, latest iOS. And yeah, it's pretty much just a case with the um, working handle on here. So it's a very nice way to uh, store and move around your iPad. Very large case for that, but still stylish. Um, I think uh, my wife, Brandy, who uh, she's the one who ordered this, gutted it, and said, all right, here, print some stuff to make everything work. Yeah, it's a fun She's just going to use it as, you know, a desktop um, with her iPad. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, everything runs on it perfectly. Like, the speakers, you know, come out of the screen where, you know, we kind of wish they did instead of this tiny little one down here. But you have all this space for adding additional, like, chargers. So if I get, uh, yeah, that guy there. You can see that the way that this is hollowed out, you still have space for like a Qi charger for your watch or any other. Oh, I've seen some folks do that. They yeah. add some other charger accessories to it. Some wireless charger dongles can fit here. There's all this area where the battery mm -hmm. would be. Let's get it in frame. The trackpad um, is inert, but you have one built into the keyboard. But yeah, there's lots of room in here for stuff. Yeah, they're usually placed like around this palm rest area for your iWatch. Yeah, there's and a then, speaker still here that you could probably utilize. Yeah, that the button could be utilized. It's a tiny little so you JST. Go forward if you want to spend way more time on it, but this mm -hmm. is like the MVP. It's the minimal viable kind of project where you really don't need to like destroy this yeah. case. So have like just ports adding on to it that you can. Uh, yeah, you can have real things connected to it. For additional how, stuff. What you want to spend time on it. Um, but yeah, as a as a kind of a what would you say it was a two week thing? Uh, it was about two weeks, yeah, yeah to get off. everything. Uh, so this this is the tray. Tell us about the the design. Yeah, so we got these little spots here that hold the uh, keyboard in place. So that there is a little bit of a taper on the uh, keyboard, so you can have like a rusting, like it's perfect for your palm to rest it, okay. and uh, that just compensate for the way that this little thing here ah, okay. moves it up. So, so the tray, um, if you guys have a different keyboard you want to do, you can you can remix. Uh, it's not going to fit. <laughs> well, that's why I'm telling you. So we them. searched like all of any all the online stores for a uh, keyboard that would fit perfectly in here without having to cut anything apart and that's what a lot of people are doing this was the only one that would fit perfectly within the dimensions like you can see this that keyboard. This it actually goes coach. right inside of it so okay. yeah if you guys find one that is the perfect dimensions maybe people don't want a trackpad i mean yeah and they're all all the keyboards that we found are a lot bigger so they're either um, longer so that you would have to chop with your now, design constraints. Now the only downside to this keyboard is that it's not Bluetooth. You need a dongle on there. Sure. And we'll take a look at how we're able to solve you that. that having easy. the uh, magnetic right angle connector on there. So we have the these uh, two little um, little cuts what? to align with these tabs here. So we're not cutting anything off again. Yeah. yeah well, it, I know you it doesn't in. fit, but like if folks wanted to, I don't know, make a, their own keyboard, you can use this design because it's the tolerances will fit yeah, this yeah. model of iBook mm -hmm. and you can put whatever in here. Maybe you don't want a keyboard. Maybe you want another to screen or something here. That's a good idea. That's yeah, what I'm saying. Point. Like, go ahead and take, you did all this work on figuring out the tolerances to fit in the case. That's impressive because you don't have a one-to-one -one CAD that you can just look at. You had to measure all yeah. of this out and figure out all the geometry that's inside. Mm -hmm. So. That's a yeah, great resource for folks to remix. Yeah. So and I hope people take it because they have before, and I hope they continue to. On that point too, the reason why I was uh, able to relatively quickly able to model this is because this is the exact same keyboard that we use in our Raspberry oh, Pi really? you, you keyboard. I already had all the dimensions. So I don't have a cap model have, of this, but you do have Oh, I have all the dimensions, and you have the depths. I have, like uh, again, the taper for having this yeah, fit in there. That's great. All that's you used it before. Yeah, you know, yeah. The, the laptop build with the Pi. Exactly, yeah. So all the sketch dimensions are there for that, all the models for it. If you want to, again, like you were saying, insert this into something else or yeah. modify that Raspberry Pi keyboard. I'm, I'm going to see people with smaller printers are going to cut this in half and figure out how to glue them back together. Yeah. So folks are going to have to do that, but it is going to fit on the bigger builds, the mm -hmm. uh, 12 by 12 inch builds. We'll handle it just fine. Any of the Creelties, they can, exactly, they can, they can yeah. print it just fine. Yeah, and it's uh, definitely helpful to have all the libraries of all those measurements because this yeah. takes about five hours to print. <laughs> sure does. So it definitely speeds up uh, uh, production. Cool. Timing on that. Now switching back to the iPad, one of the things that you, one of the uh, goals was to be able to still access 
buttons on your iPad. You need oh, to be yeah, able yeah, to yeah. access these buttons. So you cleverly made these really nice smooth cutouts that allow you to get your fingers in there. You can still pop the iPad out and mm -hmm. it's secured in there. It's not gonna come out at this angle, which yeah. is really nice. Man, this hinge is really nice and like gripped. Yeah, like, it's really the only well. problem is the, uh, it is heavier on this it side. It is, but, but your it's because, here. <laughs> well, it's because I took the battery out out Whoa. of here. So that yeah, would definitely give it some weight, but I just didn't want to have the battery in there because it's already, you know, relatively heavy compared to like, you know, sure. the iPad itself or <laughs> like an iBook yeah, Air. Yeah. All right, so uh, yeah, so the let me get this in. I don't have any woo! fingernails to get this out. <laughs> so yeah, the iPad pops right out like so, and then here is what's happening with the dongle. We have the magnetic right angle, so none of the ports get damaged when you actually insert this into the bezel. And uh, we have here the uh, USB C to USB A converter because the A dongle. Of dongles. <laughs> what do you know? It's a uh, very Apple esque, right? Having oh, yeah, three yeah. dongles. Three dongles, yes. <laughs> so yeah, that pops in like that, that's and of great. course, love these things. We're out of stock because everyone loves them. They're yeah. really great. Um, you can uh, have different uh, tabs here. They're com uh, compatible. Yeah, little uh, tips here. So these can come out. You can have multiples of these, like have one already in your microcontroller board and just swap mm -hmm. between these. Yeah, Lamar's loving those. So she brought them in the shop yeah, and they have that cool. full 12, 120 watt, so they can do some high current stuff as well. Exactly, yeah, so all that works. Does this work this way too? Yeah, it works Oh, that that's great. It's yeah. right or left angled. Mm -hmm. I just, this blew my mind. I think the <laughs> the product description says right angle, but it's whatever it's angle. Whatever angle. <laughs> right or left. It works. You're but right for my right. build, it's, yeah, it's just pointing down. I don't all know right. why I did that. Can we take this bezel out? Uh, I, I'd have that? to unscrew this. All right, you got two screws here that are yeah. holding the, uh, the yep. 3D print in place. Good point. Uh, we'll, We'll recover it when we're or go over it again. When we're looking at the guide, but yeah, only what is it? Two, four, six torque screws. They're the T8 uh, screw torque screws. Or that's all the screws that are required to hold the um, four shells together. So like it's bottom a, and the top ones. A, a screen in its own with the reflection. Oh, of the yeah. lights. it looks cool. Yeah. So this so guy. Pop it back in. Yeah. yeah so just this slides, slides in. in. There's a little space for that guy there, and it just pops in like that. Cool. Now we're in fusion. Whoops. <laughs> That's great. All right, yeah, so, so uh, super simple. Uh, same thing with the keyboard, we already showed that. And then, uh, yeah, the coolest part of the build, of course, is that the, the handles, handles work fully perfectly. Intact. You have the uh, little spring in there, too, to have it pop back in. Very fun. Did you have a lot of fun working on it? Hold on, I'm trying to get my snap. I think it, my battery died. Okay, yeah. Let's go over that again. The coolest part about it is the handles still work. The hinges and the springs. Oh, I think my glasses are overheating. <laughs> All right, cool. Too many yeah. snaps, man. I think so. All right, cool, yeah. Uh, like you were saying before, you can uh, hook up the speaker. I didn't take that up, but that could definitely be hooked up to like an amplifier or something and then have the, uh, hmm, there's no audio jack on this guy. So, oop, never mind. <laughs> the pad, yeah, and the iPad Pro. <laughs> it's got really good uh, sound. It sounds great. Uh, it's type fine. in GarageBand. Uh, the how about just Nano? No, I have a song already in GarageBand. Oh, let's see. Does Control Tab still work? Let's see. Yep. Yeah, Control Garage Tab Band. It's and open. GarageBand. Oh, yeah. and that's obviously we forgot to mention that too. The uh, trackpad. I, yeah. Yeah. So trackpad works, so it acts like a mouse button, and of course all the uh, mouse feels clicks. Feels like a real laptop yeah. with the mouse. That's a big deal. Yeah. Here's a quick sound demo. So having this in the studio, like having the aesthetics of a old school computer, super cool. Those are beeps and bloops from yours truly. <laughs> Coming out soon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe. So it, it's it's a lot of fun to take a, an old thing, revive it, bring it back, and with mm -hmm. 3D printing, Man, you could just make it adapt to anything. It's really, really cool. This is one of those projects that were really intimidating. Like me and Pedro wouldn't originally done it, so it mm -hmm. wasn't too much of an investment on her part. Yeah. Um, so in case it didn't work out, good like point. It's still a yeah. Cool thing. This was about 150 bucks. Um, when searching for these on eBay, like they don't have to work. You know, all you're looking yeah, for is this the shell. This one didn't have a working power, power adapter, so, so I couldn't even really test. Like, oh, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Let's take a look uh, let's here. See, is there any? Yeah, yeah. We got a good boy. Yes. Yanni iPad Pro is good use case right there. Yes, yes. You could probably um, honk a big old battery bank in there. Yeah, you could put a big battery bank in there and it'd become your charger bank. 
That'd be cool. All your devices can charge yeah, to it. Yeah. Very good idea. I think the 66 or one of our USB battery banks would fit perfectly in there. So you might be able to wire the original keyboard to trackpad, MCU, USB conversion. That sounds like a Jeff Apple. Question, like, is there a correct position magnet to turn off the screen? I'm not sure. Also build. Scores. Oh, the iPads, look, it's, it's, it has a proximity sensor. So when you put oh, it over, Oh, that's right. Yeah, the off. iPad will turn off. Yeah, I don't uh, You can it. do several things with the iPad. You can have it turn off on auto sleep, mm -hmm. or you can say on proximity. There's ambient there's sensors. Sensor here. Yeah, like, there's a front facing camera as well. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really nice. Like th this is an iPad Pro um, model. So it's it's fully featured. It's got mm -hmm. a bunch of yeah. It has its own sensors. Bunch of stuff. Yeah. Let me do the proximities and ambient sensors. So, so like a, a turns a, down a FaceTime call, a, mm -hmm. a Zoom meeting. Like this is yeah. a really good like thing for that. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't played with the iPad uh, OS in a while, so I was very surprised to see how much of a desktop it finally is. I mm -hmm. mean, there's a window and window. What is it called? You oh can do yeah, yeah, yeah. Task apps now mm -hmm. and all this. I'm yeah, not it's, trying to be an iPad ad here. But I mean, it's it's a computer. I'm impressed. <laughs> yeah, modern iPads are nuts. Yeah, they're nuts. They're basically. Yeah, that's why. Uh, again, the that's why this makes sense, right? Like, it absolutely makes, perfect makes sense. sense to, yeah, like, turn it into an, an actual thing. Um, I'm surprised Apple does not uh, get into all this. Thing. Yeah, just sell the shell for your iBook. That's I don't funny. think anybody does. I don't know third party. No, it's a hopefully lot I'm of, wrong on that. Yeah, Somebody post the link. <laughs> but let's go ahead and jump into the. Could you put where the trackpad is? What could, what could you put where the trackpad is? I guess um, uh, another trackpad. Yeah, anything here. A Again, we didn't would want be great. to. I'd love to yeah. have the, like, the Apple Watch and you'd be able to charge this. So a cheat charger under here. Mm -hmm. Does the button click at all? Yeah, that's so click. There's no more, but this is, you can, you probably rip it out or something. No, it's just hanging there. You just connect it to whatever. Mm -hmm. We do read. sell trackpads, so I bet you could hack it. With some more time, you could uh, use our trackpad or put a trackball yeah. mouse in there. We have a trackpad ball, ball mouse. <laughs> Liz says <laughs> Pi Portal hotkeys. Perfect. Oh, that's yeah. a good idea. Oh, imagine a macro pad built into this shit. That'd be so oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. So many fun ideas. So keep them coming. Let's let's uh, continue on. We got some more after batteries. I think the Re has a Bluetooth version of that particular keyboard. They do. Mm, yeah, they do. Go look at the dimensions oh, for that. Oh, oh yeah. That's that's, that's <laughs> we gotcha. tried. A, I think like two or three days were spent on just looking for a yeah. keyboard. I ordered some. Sweet. They didn't fit. And they're like smaller. They're like the tiny little thumb ones where Brandy's like, I can't type on this. Like she's going to use oh, this for actual idea. work, you know? Uh, an I, uh, a I pencil. What are they called? Apple pencils would be great to have here. One of the recommendations. That, yes. If you're, yes. That would be perfect. Yes. Because yeah. the way that the um, the other builds are working. Yeah, just make a groove right here. I mean, here. he takes Damn. this entire shell off, so he has like room for the pencil. Oh, yeah, really? Having the pencil right here, yeah, mm -hmm. that's a perfect that's a idea. idea. Yeah. I don't know where the pencil for this guy is. It's somewhere. <laughs> but I'll have to look for it just so I can get the dimensions. And it looks like there's enough, you know, like there'll be enough uh, wall. <laughs> Because that's one of the things you got to look at too. Is the pencil thicker than this? Because it's already going to be thinner than it is right here. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, I wish it was the same size. That's it was so thing. bummed out when I looked at the dimensions. It's like, oh man, this yeah. isn't going to fit. It's like actually wider. Yeah. It's like, I don't know why they couldn't keep the exact same footprint. Like, just add a USB or a Bluetooth. Maybe people were like, it's too small. I, don't know. <laughs> I need it bigger. No, it's a, it's one of my favorite keyboards. Yeah, uh, I mean typing, products. like the, the clickiness of it, mm -hmm. the trackpad being right there. Yeah, but being able to pop everything out is so critical, man. Like you'd be mm -hmm. able to replace the battery and yeah, charge it. destructive. All, all right, yeah. let's go ahead and jump into the learn guide. Yeah, so. I know it's um, so fun that we're just ba we can just babble and talk about this. Right, is actually why we started this show, right? Because like I just want <laughs> so to like run what our lives were during this era. And, like, uh, you remember why it, we yeah. chose to go with like a pro version than anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Firewire. Yeah, Firewire. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so head on over to the Adafruit Learn System. We got the guide published earlier, yet yeah, late yesterday. Yes. Um, yeah. All you really need is that keyboard, you get your iPad, and this dongle here so mm -hmm. um if you got wanna, these in stock uh, yeah these are perfect got a couple of these for any of your uh microcontrollers so you can have those ready to oh, go the tips sold separately tips. Uh, uh, we have tip. different types of tips so there's USB C. there's micro there what else if you scroll down you show the other ones that we sell 
Uh, of course, they're not going to show up in the suggestions. <laughs> there you go. A yeah, micro I see. and a panel mounted yeah. one. Yes, pencil for the case would be excellent. Yeah. I forgot about the map pencil. Yeah, for an artist, that would be really good. Or whatever, yeah. So, anywho. Um, yeah, you can swap these, these are out. These great. Yep. You can swap them out. They can do high current stuff. Yeah, 120 watts as it's listed there. So perfect for charging. There you go. Good for your older there. MacBooks that don't have the USB. They're a little pricey, yeah. but that's because Mac they safe. can do data and power. At a high you got to pay for the chips that are not going to blow up on you. <laughs> yeah, it's a really fancy dongle, though. Cool, cool. Some extra the converter, the torque screws. Some, yep, I needed those because the bits we had, they stripped on me. Oh. Yeah, the luckily the it wasn't the screw that stripped, it was the, the bit. The, <laughs> nice. Freaking I'm glad. Stripped. Yeah, those are cheap bits. <laughs> like dang it. <laughs> yeah, some like pewter metal. <laughs> oh, that's great. Oh, and uh, some parts oh. I, I think either What's John that? or Ann added these. Oh the cables. Perfect, yeah. Yeah, in case you wanna charge up stuff. Okay, cool. Cool, Sweet. cool. Yeah. Jump on over to the 3D print. All right. Just these two pieces. You are gonna need supports. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I there's list some overhangs. Where those are. Yeah, there's no way around these. No, supports are great these days, folks. Like mm -hmm. it's all it's all good. There's really good um, settings here that you can try out. Yeah, roll over oh, the yeah. iPad insert. You can see here the supports for these. It's only that little um, what is that? That bar that's um, right where the USB connector is. Yeah, right. right click right. on it, make it big. What is it? Yeah, you just click right on it, and it'll. You go to the Enhance. original size. Yeah, you can see here that's the only spot I added yeah. supports for the iPad insert part. Did you do? It's just customized. Custom yeah, no, custom just custom supports, supports inside okay. of Cura. If you don't have that installed, it's under the marketplace and the plugins. That's a plugin. It is free. It's a free plugin. Mm -hmm. Cool. And then you just draw um, a yeah. rectangle right just in that spot. Mm -hmm. The um, all the other spots, there's a big old fillet on there, so you don't need supports for the entire frame. Okay. For the keyboard frame, I could add any fillets on there because then it would have like pushed the keyboard up. I got some ideas here. Looking at this, this is. Full on the bed man this is edge to edge yeah it looks like you have a skirt and you want to if you're noticing that the part doesn't fit you always want to check the skirt distance drop it down to one millimeter one from millimeter, distance yeah. yeah otherwise it will not fit right it'll just so that's a good thing so i tried putting something big and i was like why isn't it working i it's know it's, it yeah. but it was because my distance was like 10 millimeters and, and that's like, the what? default yeah the default is 10 so that's a good tip there always check your skirt distance for those big old boy parts. <laughs> I need to start adding that into the bo boiler plate yeah. settings. I like stuff. talking about it in live because nah. that's what we offer here on the show. It's like there you go. <laughs> the actual tips. And this is, uh, you know, me looking at it kind of a first time with yeah. fresh eyes. I'm like, hey, don't forget about that. Mm -hmm. That could be a potential problem. So you can download the Fusion 360 files or just the STLs to or modify the those. Oriented, ready to go, I guess. Yep, yep, these are oriented. Just pop them Regular in like that. PLA, the tonches will probably work out a vessel PLA. Mm -hmm. It's as easy as a print. You yeah. can try PETG, but you don't know what the... Oh, it should work. It should There's work. no differences right. in the tolerance for that. Yeah, true. And the, the filament, we're just using the white. Um, I think translucent, translucent will work just because of how many shells there are, the roofs and the, the floors. It will match pretty closely to yeah, this good. white here. Yeah, it does already seen it <laughs> it kind of blends you can kind of see the infill you could get some turquoise filament and you like could. print it so yeah. it pops a little bit more so yeah, i don't know if that's that how the design was but yeah you no, could totally do that but you can i mean you can kind of see colors. some right here it would match this mm -hmm. maybe yeah, what's under but this is underneath yeah whatever <laughs> yeah whatever <laughs> going into the assembly for this i did not get any footage of gutting it because that was all brandy <laughs> Yeah, so and I didn't think this was gonna work. There's plenty of resources for folks. I think you can pull up uh, some guides off of uh, iFixit. It's, maybe you can I mean, find how to gut it. But hey, Brandy just kind of look. There's screws. She's never this built a PC the, before. She's right. never. So that's a testament to like anybody could do yeah. this. this is anybody that doesn't have, um, you know, tech experience like mm -hmm. we do. Brandy was able to. Take, yeah. it, take it apart. I think the only thing that I helped with, with was like removing the airport card or like oh, stuff okay. that I knew technically that, oh, you know. Like, you, oh, it's just, it needs a little bit more force and pop that out. Or it, just how it comes out, like the port for the US, the, the keyboard, you know, it just mm. pops right out. Oh, right, right. Just but it's because we've things. changed RAM on it so many times. Sure, yeah, so you kind of already know. We do have a little bit of muscle memory on uh Well, that's great. She did take. kind of the, 
not the grunt work, but a little bit more of like the yeah, I mean, trenches down in there. Mm-hmm. And like, yeah, and like you were saying, there's. This part. I'm sure there's like a detailed YouTube video on completely disassembling everything and fixing it. Mm, yeah, right. <laughs> so, like we said before, six T8 torque screws are uh, really the ones that are holding everything together after yeah. the after you take everything out. Yeah. Um, start off with the keyboard insert. Pretty simple. We already demonstrated that, and mm-hmm. then the screen before you put the frame bezel back on. Um, there are these little tabs that will go up against where these little frames for the this hinge photo? are. Mm-hmm. Should I make it bigger? Yeah, I don't think you could see them there. Yeah, there's like some little tabs. Um, I don't know if you can see what I'm pointing at. Maybe I can grab. Oh, uh, you can see my cursor. One. Yeah, somewhere around there. There's somewhere two tabs two that tabs. prevent it, it from sliding down. So you just tuck it under. No, you just tuck it right up against it. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, it's like a stopper, so it can't... An end stop, yeah. Nice. Uh, an end stop, so you can't uh, go down below that. Okay. And it's because of the way the shape is, it can't go above that either. Mm. So it's perfectly aligning it over... It offset just a little bit so that you have access to the power button. Mm, right. Next okay. up, you're going to set up your adapters. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. Pretty explanatory there, which way yeah, they go. Yeah. The A goes in the... the C, and the C goes in the right angle. Alright. You'll uh, pop in your iPad like show. Once the thing is already connected, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you can lay, place there. it right on top, centered, and then the Man. bezel goes right on top. Just two screws. Everything two screws for that side, and then um, closer to the uh, where the hinges are on the back, yeah. there are two more, and that uh, holds the rest of the shell together. Cool. And that's pretty much it. Wow. There you go. Retro. Yeah. So the most time-consuming part is going to be gutting it, huh? I think so. After that, it's all like, man, I just popped this. I did in, get snaps. I did get snaps of her assembly. Like, it, I don't know. It didn't take that long. Maybe like an hour or something like that. To to completely take it apart. Yeah. What? Not even. Maybe thirty minutes. Something like that. Right. These come in different colors. <laughs> this is the uh, blueberry one, I think. Yeah. Maybe um, the most popular one. I don't know. Perhaps. I um, mean, the, there's a title of the school Yeah, I mean, the, there. So we're these assuming this were was bought around. probably by, you know, the dozens. Um, yeah. remember purchasing uh, stuff for our school, and yeah, they were, were coming. Assembly Taiwan. I, I put that the, in the computer. overview page, you can see the model number that I listed it's there. It's 24 volts, 1.8 amp max. We're looking for the, the ID right here, the M25, yeah. The, two, four, five, three. It's 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 cool to look at designs. It feels like things are I don't know more disassemblable because look at this screw. Oh yeah, you can just use built-in screws. Yeah. Like you're so fancy to machine their own screws mm-hmm. and stuff. Like that's so cool, dude. Once you look on the inside, you yeah, see how like much so customization much and like stuff. how much like the way that these little pieces here are all cut to mm-hmm. match how it looks like when right. it's when it's flush up against here. You can see how the change of it. Yeah. There's so much like design details in these. Yeah, so. I would have loved to have gutted it. Mm-hmm. Because uh, then you just like all of the, learn so much from taking stuff apart. The, a lot of folks will tell you that, like, oh, I started by like, taking stuff apart. Yeah, there's a lot of design cues. Like, like even the way that the um, the bezel snaps in, there's like these mm-hmm. little guiders that like it clicks into. Wow. It's uh, lots of good inspiration for designing things. Oh, sure. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right, cool. And so that. That is the build, a retro iBook. Whoa, hey, an iPad yeah. inserted. <laughs> We've been, there we go. yeah, there we go. <laughs> We've been playing with it so much, but pretty good. Typical. All right, let's go ahead and jump into the next section. Segment? Segment. Shop talk. Shop talk. All Wait. right. No, 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 no. Oh. Sorry, what are you prototyping? <laughs> what are you prototyping? All right, uh, uh, for next week, Hey, for next week, we got a countdown clock. It's a collab project with Liz. She wrote the code for it. And um, it has as a Cutie Pie ESP32-S2 and three of the uh, new Stemma alphanumeric displays. Um, the idea is to make it a Wi-Fi countdown clock. So it connects to your internet, your Wi-Fi. And I don't have the, I have some demo code right now. So let me switch that real quick so folks can get a look at what it does. Here it is. I will change this to demo. And then this one will be text demo. And this is my demo. Here we go. All right. 
Um, so it just gives you a little message here, and then it'll connect while it's connecting. It'll say it's connected to your IP. Nice. And then uh, it says uh, 10 days, 12 hours, and 27 minutes and whatever seconds. You can change the speed of the, of the text scrolling. Mm -hmm. You can change the date. You can change the wording, the fonts. Well, not the font, but like the capitalization of the font and the message. So there you go. It's just kind of telling you how many days, hours, minutes, and seconds until whatever event that you want to do. So it could be New Year's, could be whatever date you want to set. And you can have some uh, offsets or something, I think. Um, so yeah, pretty cool content clock. Um, this was uh, an idea from Catney, and uh, Liz wrote the code, and I did the case, and we're, uh, we're all kind of working on the guide. Um, so it's a really simple three-piece design. You got my uh, my cutie pie add-on that snap fits. It has two screws here that attaches to this base, and then um, the uh, the plate here is panel mounted. Um, so it's kind of a, a really simple assembly. It's all open back so that you can uh, um, quickly get to any of the electronics if you need to. We're using Stemma cables here, and the only soldering you need to do is the address the i squared c addresses in the back there so you have um, three different pads so each one of these has a different uh, jumper because you're changing the uh the i squared c address um yeah and you can choose whatever color of uh, alphanumeric display you want because they're just single colors or you can have three different colors um yeah so it's kind of a fun thing it's at a nice uh, angle here for uh, the desk mode so uh, that's kind of it. I love how legible it is. It's like, very I thought, legible. We thought we were gonna have to use like these gel things. Yeah, you but... can use gels if you'd like, but uh, you don't need them if you, if you have no, uh, control over your uh, camera's uh, settings. You can totally change it. And then you, you can actually change the brightness in the code as well, which I didn't know. I'll save that for next week because it will be next week's project. But yeah, you can change the code, uh, the, the brightness value in the code it's all done in circuit python of course of course i think that's like we didn't even need to mention that because no. what else are we going to yeah, use I mean, yeah <laughs> what else are we use arduino <laughs> i can't like connect to quickly change my arduino sketch um i'm just not that good but anyway that's going to be next week's project countdown clock Woo countdown to, to 2023 yeah 10 days until christmas, christmas. Wow. oh my god yeah it's right here all right, so that's orders what are coming in. That's what uh, remind everybody put your orders in now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so you're not sad. Yeah. And Pedro is prototyping. What are we prototyping? Brent Rebel released much anticipated Pico W support for Whippersnapper. Check this out. How freaking cool is this? This is great. So uh, let's rock us through the hardware. Do you guys know why I'm so excited no, for this? Tell us. Oh my god! Jump into the get into the um, yeah. Let's do that. I/O for this. Right, holy dude, run down the hardware. What do you have? So this is a six dollar Raspberry Pi W. So Pi wireless Cow, Pi, Pi Cow. Cow. We have um, not just the Pi Cow W. We have the Kai Cow Pi Cow Bell <laughs> prototyping okay. board. I knew it. You would have so fun. we have uh, Stemma. Yeah. Connection on the back. Yeah, no soldering. Well, uh, a lot of soldering for, to get the, no the soldering headers on there. After you solder all your well, you don't need to solder on the stemma cable. Right. It's, and then, it makes it plug and play now, so you can connect any sensor to your Pico W or, or Pico W. Yeah. So this is a, what is it? Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. No, wait. How much is this? I don't know, but it's a very low cost. I think it's um, like ten bucks or something. It's low cost. Eight, eight fifty uh, or something. Adafruit IO project. So. Dude, Adafruit, yeah. Adafruit IO and Whippersnapper now have support for the Pi Cow W. Yes, the name is weird. I know. Sorry. Jump into uh, Adafruit IO and check out all of the readings this is getting. I already made a dashboard. If you want to go to the dashboard too, sure. Uh, so just click on plus, and you can see all of the. I didn't test any of these yet, but they're all of these. I'm going to as soon as the show is over. You can have access to all of these different sensors. My God. Components. I haven't looked at this since uh, since our last. I, I just Servos, got these. I did these yeah. last week. These are mm -hmm. great. All the waterproof I, I'm stuff. I'm helping out with all the dimmable LEDs and the. Uh, piazzo buzzers piazzo piazzo <laughs> piazzo piazzo yes six dollars pi uh pico pico w is six bucks six seven eight nine ten ten fifty 
for this little build here before I think like the feather is like what 12 15 bucks so I'm able to have all of this with just the uh, Pico W this and then let's jump into the uh, dashboards check out the graphs I should have put a, a nice uh, emoji on there yeah, Pico the W and of course the Can CSS edit layout rearrange those <laughs> oh. jumping around there you go. Jump, jump, jump around. That's fun. See. Dang you, CSS. There we That's go. Fine. Cool. Nice little graph of uh, humidity and the temperature in here and a graph plotted over time. You can see there, uh, I got this set up at like 9.27 in the morning. Mm. Proof is in the data. Freaking awesome. Very cool. Now I got to make a case for this. Um, yeah, yeah. Make it like another node thing. I think Brent wants... Um, what did he see? So when the sun goes out, it'll like turn off some LEDs. Or when you close a cabinet, it'll like turn off the TV because mm. you can put a smart um, outlet on this That's right. and have it trigger when something else is sensed in um, one of the components. Cool. So check it out if you want to test out your Pi Cow. It's ready. It's there. With uh, Whippersnapper and Adafruit IO, it's supported. Mm-hmm. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention when you're inside of uh, the bike, um, uh, inside of there where? and devices. Uh, no, add a component. Yeah, go back in, add a component. Wanted to highlight show dev, so you can check out some of the things that are in, that are in the works. So if you scroll all the way down, you can see the RGB LEDs are in development. Oh, cool. Topical. Have to make a new kind mm -hmm. of part for that. Yeah. So that means new pixels coming soon. Ooh. This is oh, Brent's cool. idea to make gonna the, be cool. the buzzer shape. Ah, when you roll over it. That looks nice. I'm just going to have it rotate like everything else. Ah, no, I like the yeah. uh, shake. The, uh, <laughs> where's the, the IR is pretty fun. It spins and mm -hmm. there's something else that like spawned and did something. Anyway, we're at the topic here. We're off the rails. So check out the new uh, update to uh, to Whippersnapper and uh, Afford IO. And then beta hardware. We know a lot of folks are going to use it. Mm -hmm. So you need beta 0.57. So it's the only one that will. through the installation process. Mm -hmm. pretty, Super pretty pretty easy, yeah. Oh, man. Um, the only uh, little gotcha there is I think the uh, Apple computers are still having the problem with dry getting dropping stuff. Oh, that's if you're oh, in Ventura. So don't <laughs> oh, update yeah, to yeah, Ventura. Yeah, yeah. I have not. I have no choice. I have to <laughs> test the newest. I got a choice and I didn't do it. <laughs> I know you're different uh, development. Yep. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, but yeah, that works perfectly. Please file any yeah, reports or issues that you see in beta 57. But yeah, go ahead and spin it up. Check it mm -hmm. out. I'm sure there's a couple of people with uh, Pi W's just sitting there waiting for the next project to be brought to life. Yeah, this is going to be perfect. Oh my gosh. Kind of projects like I just have this ideation mm -hmm. and I just want to see if it works and what better way to just kind of click around and get it working. Right. Can I plug the uh, Pi Cowbell too? Look at all that prototyping area. You have all these uh, grounds and power rails. Like, mm -hmm. dude. Yeah, and that stem port on there is really, really Freaking great. and sweet. Yeah. Do you have any Crap. buttons on there too? Yeah, you have a reset button oh, right here. Cool. And it could be a mm -hmm. user button too, I think. Yep. How Sweet. freaking awesome. So yeah, you have to figure case. out how to make a case for it then. So the one of the first things I want to do is another uh, soil sensor monitor. Um, I don't know if he's working on it right now, this minute, but it is on the um, list, uh, having deep sleep. So I'll have like one That'd of the cylindrical great. ones. It'll be a thin, skinny little, little spike tube. that yeah. goes into the plant. Little test tube. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> little test tube. <laughs> Toby's test tube, yeah. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. <laughs> Toby's test tube. Yeah, but super stoked. Freaking awesome. Yeah. Cool. Good way to save face. Yeah. We'll try to do a, a video kind of overview. That's coming up. Yeah. Yep. As soon as I get all my testing in. Yeah. Just got it set up. All right. Let's move on. Let's do the shop talk this week in CAD parts. We got a whole bunch of new CAD parts. Let's take a look here. I'll run off the list, but you can get 3D models of Adafruit parts by hitting up the GitHub repository. Just search for Adafruit CAD parts on GitHub and you'll find it. So this week, let's see what we got. All right, this week I got the Feather M0 Bluefruit LE. That was a user submitted, it was a user requested BART. And then on our side, um, we got the SPG40 humidity temperature sensor the ENS 160 sensor, 
and the NAU7802 um, breakout. So check those out if any of those are in your projects and you want to design something around those parts, check them out. And if you have any parts that you don't see, you can always add a part request in the issues tab. So check those out. Um, shout out to folks who have been requesting that. Like I said, the Blue Fruit M0 uh, was a user requested part and I was able to get that one out while, uh, while doing the other things. So check those out. Those are the latest parts and uh, we'll, uh, we'll make more as we, as we move forward. All right. Um, I have not been putting the links every time it's my turn mm -hmm. for the projects. <laughs> yeah, I know. All right. Cool. All right. Um, I guess that's it for Shop Talk. I'll, uh, oh, uh, what the uh, committee makes? Yeah, yeah. No, no, I know. I was just looking at the owl. <laughs> All right. So this, uh, every, Tuesday, we 3D print something from the community. This week, it's a uh, tea light tree. This thing is pretty cool. This was designed this by Javier, Javier uh, Sarah, Sarah, made a chandelier bowl, is what they called it. I can't even pronounce that. <laughs> this was 3D printed in mermaid blue PLA from Protopasta. It uh, allows these tea lights to, uh, to get fitted on there. Again, these are not real flames. <laughs> yep, they're tea lights, they're LEDs. Um, just fantastic, uh, kind of festive looking. I like the design. Candle holder, yeah. so very nice. Don't use real candles; use LEDs. Mm -hmm. Very you're gonna, festive. You're gonna need supports to hold up yeah. the little floors for where the candles fit in. But go. check these out. Yeah, fantastic filament again from Protopasta, mermaid color. Yeah, it's so got like a sea foam green in it or something. It's like a teal. It matches the uh, the blueberry iBook very well, actually. Oh. So if you want to print your insert in that. Uh, that'd work well. Mm -hmm. um, there's some support material that was for yeah, each of these each things. Yeah, each one needs it. So what is it? One, yeah. two, three, four, and that's it. Yeah, it's pretty but cool. The, you know, tubes are nice and uh, these tubes. These uh, this kind of what meshes nice and thick, mm -hmm. strong. So kind of a neat one. If you got tea lights and you want to look festive, you can print this out. <laughs> yes, fire not recommended. <laughs> All right, and that's a uh, this, this week's Timeless Tuesday. Let's pull awesome, up uh, awesome. some community makes. All right, first up, we got a heat set insert. There's always a heat set insert every week. Yeah. <laughs> All right, this week uh, we got one from Salute. Salute posted up their make of the heat press insert. Looks like they added some sort of a base for their uh, for their power supply. It looks like with uh, some additives and stuff. So that's pretty cool. It's good to see folks adding um, their equipment to the build. So that's cool. There's no text on it, but uh, it's great to see a photo of it. So it's really nice. All right, next up, we have a, a remix of our Extrusion 2020 wall mount by LightJK01. Posted this up on Thingiverse. So if you're ever looking for um, a wall mount for a 2020 aluminum extrusion, maybe you want to hang some things on it, um, you could uh, use this 3D printed um, kind of pieces here that will f mount to the wall or whatever surface. Looks like they're using it for their headphones and some other odds and ends. I use it for my hats, <laughs> uh, but they designed their own kind of, uh, remixed it rather to have their own little hangers but uh, yeah, aluminum extrusion is great uh, for mounting stuff and attaching things. So check that out. All right, we got some leftovers from Halloween season. Urus Hoofer posted up their make of um, the pumpkin skull remix that we did. So you can check that out. Gave it a good rating and it seemed to print well. Next up we have mag tag stuff so if you're looking for a case for your mag tag check this one out uh, corky posted theirs up give us a rating five out of five look at that and uh there's their printed uh case with the magnetic feet on their fridge they got several of them or something you know, like three of them oh wow and one for everything 
Nice font too. E really nice e ink display. The mag tag is. Let's go check it out. Thanks for everybody posting their makes on that one. We don't have one but two mag tag posts. So let's check out the second one. This is from D S. D S T Rum Ohm. Destrom. D Strom. Posted up on Prucibles. Uh, it's, they say this is an awesome snap fit case. That I have used with magnetic feet. I have slight modifications to the front cover STL in order to remove the button covers. I'm too fingers are big, so I want to. I didn't want to risk damaging the cover, and I'll, I'll leave it at that. But yeah, look at this fantastic teal color of the mag tag case. It looks hey. really nice. Look at that font. Looks fantastic. I haven't seen that teal color since. MakerBot Maker days, bot. yeah, like 2010 days. It was ABS. Yeah. So check it out. Very fun. Two mag tags this week. All right, we got three more to round it off. Here we go. Here's a make of the Mario-inspired boo hey. planter with a very festive um, succulent, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, printed on a flash forge. Whoa, remember Flash Forge? Nice. Oh, it looks like it's dual colored or? No, it's painted. Ah. Oh painted. yeah, the paint can, can see the, can the leakage run. a little bit. Yeah. But it looks fine for, you know. You do that. All right, and the last one, I think it went backwards. I forgot the pie case. The Raspberry Pi case that has a face on it. This was, I think, a remix by Mongo Maker. They posted up their mix of the Raspberry Pi case so snap fits I think or maybe it has screws I don't remember um, they didn't like the cosmetic design so they made it into a simple Raspberry Pi logo yeah you're free to do, do that for sure yeah yep modifications are always welcome yeah for sure make it yours okay and then the last one is an iPhone case flexible MagSafe case so they remixed Pedro's uh, flex case nice. and made a nice big cutout for those uh, wireless MagSafe connector nice. things. So if you're looking for a flexible case for your Apple phone, Super cool. check it out. They say I modified Adafruit's case to add a MagSafe opening to the iPhone 13 Pro. Very nice. And this is printed in TPU filament by Neat Filaments. Nice. Mm, that's a new one. And printed on a Creelty Ender 5. Very, very cool. Thank you, Pilot Plotter, for posting that one up. And that's this week's community make. Shout out to everybody for posting their makes. Awesome. Very fun. Um, and then back over to Discord. We're about to run the. That's pretty much the show, folks. We'll uh, let you know that tonight is show and tell. We'll be hosting tonight. So we hope to see you Ooh. there. We invite you to come on, share what you're working on. Um, and then JP is still at it with uh, the new time change. Every Wednesday at 8 p.m. is JP's slash Ask an Engineer. On Fridays, we have a deep dive with Tim, Foamy Guy. From the Desk of Lady, it will return at some point. We don't soon, know when. Soon, soon. Maybe. Yeah. Um, Mondays are CircuitPython weekly meetings, every Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. You could always check out the uh, the archive too on YouTube or whatever podcasting service. Product pick of the weeks by JP are every Tuesday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. And then we do the Wednesday show in the morning. So, uh, yeah, other than just tonight, those two shows, and tomorrow, we'll see you folks next week. Any last questions? Yeah, DJ Devin is asking about the support plugin. Oh, sure. Yeah, let's take a look. I, I can open up Cura 2. Don't believe I have it on this computer. But yes, you are going to need a. I think there's a fix watertight option. Is that the mesh tools? Yeah, mesh tools. Yeah. I had to reinstall it with my latest update to Cura. Oh. So there might be an update too. Yeah. Let me uh, pull it up for you folks. So you can see on my screen, full screen here. Here's Cura 
marketplace is kind of hidden stuff here. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of and like tools marketplace. Right I don't want to buy a thing. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like marketplace. But you can sell it, I suppose, if you were a developer. Yeah. So uh, I just clicked on the button, the icon up there. Is this also, the marketplace? check search. Yeah, you and can search for mesh tools. Supports. Type in supports. I, it might be the cylindrical custom supports. It's a plugin. Okay, here's my scroll down. Maybe it's that cylindrical one. Maybe. What do you mean, maybe? Yeah, that, uh, this might be it. Yeah, this is the one that lets you add your own custom supports. Oh, yeah, I think mesh pillars, tools. Cross. Mm -hmm. This cube. I think this is it. Yeah. So let me install that. I don't. I haven't actually used it. So. Yeah, this is really good because you can choose different shapes. Oh, yeah, look, pillars, bridges, mm -hmm. arcs, sections across, reform. Yeah. Cubes, quit. Tubes. Quit cure real quick. Oh, yeah, I have to quit it in order to start uh, it. To do it. We're doing this to because um, I need to set it up. Yeah, I I haven't set it up on this computer either. <laughs> yeah, I noticed there's but some like, of the, uh -oh, some of your profiles aren't there either, yeah. like the CP2. Drop a whatever so recent the marketplace. Oh no, you got to drop some the uh, drop a STL or OBJ or something in there model so you can actually look at it. And click on it. Yeah, that's what it is. Let's see the little cylindrical one down there. Okay. Yep. Click so on let it. me click on let it. me redo what I just did. So you click on the model. Your options show up here. It's it should auto populate once you restart Acura. So um, there you go. I use the uh, rectangular ones. This mm -hmm. one? Cube? Yep. And then draw. How do you use it? Just tap or click on anywhere on there. Probably on the model, I think. Oh, there it is. Yeah, there it is. And you can see right here the object list. So if it's like hidden, you can look at your oh, object is, list yeah. and click on it that way. All right. Maybe look at a tutorial on how to use it and stuff, but um, it seems to be working. I just mm -hmm. I haven't used it ever. So yeah, and then go like, to your move tools to move it around. Make sure you're only selected oh, on the support cube because then you'll move your model around after you know spending all this time placing it all carefully. Yeah. <laughs> I'd, I'd want to watch. So always look at your object list to make sure that you're clicking you on the sports. Uh, this is the, the scale. You probably want to do it not uniform. <laughs> yeah. So you can and zoom out so you so it'll uh, scale it up bigger. Otherwise, you'll do all these tiny little increments if you're zoomed up all the way. All right. I know, this you is can too play much with that. Around, folks. Yeah, it's a little bit annoying. Yeah. But. And you could see it messes with your model too <laughs> if you're like too close to Center it. Center selected. Lay I think flat. it's a uh, Command R for. Uh... Oh my god! Yup, it does too much. <laughs> it's like oh what no. have I done? It's like looking at every face. <laughs> I don't it's, like uh, this. <laughs> it's Command. It's Command R to uh, I center. I could have this fusion and been done. Yeah, but here you have like you know control over. You know, supports only get you know two percent. I know. Look, density. I have never used this plugin, so yeah. that's why I'm like treating it. No, as I'm, I'm glad that we're showing it here because it's like it's you know you gotta get some. Um, Sorry, I didn't actually show use. any of that because I thought I was showing it. But anyway, look at a tutorial because I was just literally like yeah, you gotta re around. yeah quit and restart. Yeah, but it's there. Quit and restart. It'll tell you to restart. Oh no! They were saying that for the screen. I know. I know. That's why mouse. I'm showing it now. Oh. Yeah, I forgot the uh, to show it. But hey, it's it's over here. Uh, when you click on your model, it's it's down there. It's called custom support cylinder. This is a support blocker. So I don't know if that's a part of the same one. But no, I think the support blocker is part of mesh. Um, you want the mesh it? tools. So if you have a bunch of supports that need to be supported, you don't want to sit there and click around and make a custom one for each one, but you do want to make one to block, you know, this one area you don't want supports. Yeah. That's what that's for. Will that do it? I think you got to click down on it. There it is. Whew, that's a big, big support. Look at that. That's funny. Mm -hmm. Any hoodle. You'll want to watch the tutorial if there is one. Check your object oh, list over yeah, here. Check Make sure that that's what you're clicking right on again, because that's the biggest annoyance. Yeah. <laughs> we want to move a thing and it moves the entire that's model. That's very helpful. I wouldn't have known that there's an object to look in the object list for your support. That's kind of cool that it treats it as a real model. And then uh, click and then click again on your object. You see how it like auto automatically moves you? I used to like that until I had to do like screenshots and I didn't want things moving around. Yeah, and the camera an flips me around and it's like yeah, offsets. It's like, why are you? It's an it's a over here center camera when item is selected. I always got to be like, Woosa, this I is know. 
free. Beta. This is free. Source. This is open source. This is from a different company, <laughs> not Cruelty. You know. But anyway, I hope that's helpful. Um, yeah. So I use a um, a Wacom it's a new tablet to acquire. <clears throat> as my mouse. Oh my god. And I cannot pain. use it inside of Cura no, it's, it's for since for like it. version five. So for years oh, now, wow. I have to use a trackpad when I'm navigating around in Cura. That's and nice. I use that pen because I have you know my wrist freaking hurts. Wow. I'm so nice. I have a physical pain like. I, Wow, can you imagine that? Having a physical Where I pain? have to use a trackpad to navigate because I can't use It literally my pains tool. me to use your tool. It's like they hate <laughs> people who do sculpting. Is that what it is? Does yes, Gear hate people so who much hate. are modelers <laughs> who sculpt and have to use a pen? <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, this has turned into the Cura podcast. <laughs> no, this is great, though. I like, no, I like being able to show workflows yeah, and, and how showing things our work. Frustrations is, 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 it goes hand in hand, like, hey. Yeah, no, I was watching Look you do something that. in Fusion, and it's like, why are you messing up in my time? Like, ah, oh, oh, it so like angry. relieved me seeing know, that you too have this problem. Because no, it's like, I thought it was me. You best at constraints <laughs> and everything, but you're still going to run into these Fusion errors. It's like, you you, you killed yourself because I deleted one face? Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> I added a sketch here? Oh, oh yeah. my God. <laughs> oh, yeah. Freak out. All right, that's the end of the show. <laughs> yep, that is going to do it. We're going to see everybody tonight on Show and Tell. We hope to see you there. I think we're off next week. or Yeah, it's Christmas next week, right? So um, We'll be gone. around. I think we have a show. Let me see. I think we'll be on Show and Tell or something. Yeah. Or... We're not doing the show, though. It's... You don't want to do the show? Oh, wait, no, it's on it's Saturday. Yeah. It's the 21st is on uh, next Wednesday, so we should be good to see you folks next week. Next okay. week. But if we don't, yeah. you know, have the rest, you know, enjoy the rest of the year. Um, we got lots of fun planned stuff and lots of other projects coming up. Yeah. We'll see you folks tonight, though. Yeah. And with Thanks all on, that folks. said, remember to make a great, make a great day. day. Bye, see everybody. You see you tonight. Ooh.